What is happening everyone? Welcome on back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you stopping by as we listen to side two. Misplaced childhood. Where'd you put it? Who knows, but we're gonna find it today. Marillion, we're getting back into the album. We've listened to side one and now we're just moving on to the second side of the album here. Uh, before we jump into it, which I'm gonna do so shortly, my air conditioner is out right now, so it's a little warmer in the room than usual. So I'm just letting you know that my fan is on, so you'll probably hear that running, and I hope I don't think the wind's blowing in the microphone, but just so you know, you're gonna hear that definitely. And I may or may not be wearing any pants. So there's that. Let's go ahead and start off with the first track, which is Waterhole Expresso Bongo. Um, and I'll probably just let that run into the next track, Lords of the Backstage, since those together make about four minutes. So yeah, let me put these on and uh, cool it down with some iced matcha and uh, we'll go ahead and get into the Waterhole. Let's go. Xylophone, marimba, whatever it is. That's cool. As this fades into the next track, I really enjoy the marimba vibes, whatever it is, that snarling voice. Um, guitar is aggressive. Good track. No, Boom! Okay, stop it right there for just a second. Just a moment. We got it. Gotta yeah, split it up, talk about it a little bit, we'll catch the flow, I promise I'll go back. Okay, so like I mentioned before, with uh, with Waterhole, I, I really like the vibes, the aggressive guitar tone, the snarling delivery there from Fish. Like, I really enjoyed all that, right? That's a nice kind of intro track. This one kind of pulls back just a little bit, softens things up. I like that dynamic song structure, the, the, uh, the off-kilter, I guess you could say, um, uh, time signature that's going on. I don't know exactly what it is because I wasn't counting, but... Sometimes you don't count, you just kind of feel. So I'm listening. I don't know, I don't remember now. But <laughs> but it's fun. It's nice. And I like the lyrics. Let me, let me back up a second, just really quick here. Let me go to Waterhole, which kind of comes off of the whole Wide Boys thing that we got going on before. Uh, when the taxes gather in mock solemn, sol solemnity, funeral hearses court the death of virginity. Was it paradise lost or paradise found? Did we gain respect or were we holding ground? You had found love, or so you believed, and the wide boys tattooed your hearts upon their sleeves. So when you think it's time to go, when you think it's time to go, don't be surprised. The heroes never show. You're on your own out here, kid. <laughs> and then in Lords of the Backstage, I really like the first line, a love song with no validity. I think that's a pretty that's a pretty good line. There's no there's no heart behind your love. There's nothing behind it. It's just a, a love song with shallow and meaningless words. Pretend you never meant that much to me. Numb, a valium child bored by meaningless collisions. A, a lonely stretch of headlight. Diamonds trapped under black ice. A mirror cracked along the white lines. I just wanted you to be the first one. And then you get some ashes are burning. You know, a little renaissance there. Um, I, I didn't sing that right. A lifestyle, but who else can sing that right except Annie? A lifestyle with no simplicities, but I'm not asking for your sympathies. Talk, we can never talk. Distanced by all that was between us. Lord of the backstage. And then he, he uh, says at the end, bridges are burning, bridges are burning. So I still know exactly what's going on, but this connection, romantic or otherwise, this relationship is definitely breaking down. Those bridges are burning. They're gone, yo. Now let's move on <laughs> to the next track here, which is going to be a monster, about nine minutes long. Uh, that will be Blind Curve. Let me pull it back just a second here. Give me a second, ignore that. And we're gonna let it run right about there. Let's go. See that switch, that was powerful. Immediately into a sweeping, eruptive solo. So now we're passing strangers. Oh, I remember to run away with my lower down. This is good. I like that, that's deep. Blind curve. All right, let me just let me just mention one thing. 
A standout among this whole album, but especially in this track, I have to mention Rothery. His guitar playing is perfect. I have, there is nothing else I have to say about his guitar playing. From the sweeping anthemic playing that we get in big moments, especially near the beginning, to that little break in between where there's a lot of space left. There's almost a, a folky, echoey vibe going on there into some of the harder riffs that uh, arise on occasion, blistering solos, it's all there. And his guitar playing is very expressive. It's technical without being in your face and saying, hey, look at my, my certificate and my degree on musicology or whatever. Like, it's just, it's just incredibly touching and moving the way that he plays guitar. I just want to mention that. I really enjoy that. I enjoy, you know, the keyboards and the bass and everything else in here. I like uh, Fish's performance. I like Fish's performance actually more in that, um, what was that particular moment in here called Perimeter Walk? When he's kind of speaking from the shadows, he's kind of, he sounds distant. I, I, I like that subtlety that he brings to, I say the role, but <laughs> the, the music. I think the role because it just has that kind of stage drama and he has a certain presence that I can't help but see that. But the, the presence he brings onto the song itself. This was powerful. I really like the lyrics, especially as we get kind of further into it. This was a really good track. I'm not going to go over every single line in here, but this is broken up into multiple parts. The first part, vocal under a bloodlight, passing strangers, Milo, perimeter walk, which was just fantastic, threshold, uh, which is the last part there. Uh, some of the lines in here, basically what I'm kind of getting from the story is that, you know, that connection from the previous track is broken. That relationship is, is disconnected. And basically, it seems like he, he takes drugs <laughs> at some point in here. And he's kind of going on this very thoughtful, let's just say, acid trip. I know that there was some acid involved uh, in this album via Fish and part of the lyrics and everything. But he basically goes on this trip, and that's when we get to the perimeter walk. Which, if you think about it, I, I like what it's even called. Walking along the perimeter. Walking along the edge. Perhaps peering over the edge but not walking off that, right? The call of the void, perhaps even having the, the feeling of wanting to go off the edge, but not. But it's at the edge where he's kind of discovering some of those truths. Uh, so I'm, kind of, I'm gonna skip like the lyrics in the first part because it's kind of just setting the scene, but I really wanna get into the, uh, like near this perimeter walk part here. So I talked about conscious and I talked about pain and he looked out the window and it started to rain. I thought maybe I've gone crazy. So I reached for a bottle. He reached for the door. I picked up the sleeping pills crushed on the floor, inviting me to casual obscenity. And this is like basically right before we go on that perimeter walk, which we're going to read now. It would be incredible if we could retrace all the times that we lived here, all the collisions wasted. I've never been so wasted. I've never been this far out before. He could be talking, of course, about literal life. He's never been so far gone, in a, in a sense. He could also be, of course, talking about the drugs, the trip he's on, never being that far out, never being so high, perhaps, or whatever it may be. Perimeter walk. There's a presence here. I feel could have been ancient. I could have been mystical. There's a presence, a childhood, my childhood, a misplaced childhood. Mm -hmm. Give it back to me. Give it back to me. And then the next part, threshold. I saw a war widow in a laundrette washing the memories from her husband's clothes. She had medals pinned to a threadbare greatcoat, a lump in her throat with cemetery eyes. So he begins to describe seeing these tragedies, um, seeing you know a war widow who's obviously lost her husband and, and he, she's washing his clothes, um, describing soldiers going to war, uh, soup ladles poised on the lips of the poor. I see children with vacant stares destined for rape in the alleyways does anybody care i can't take anymore should we say goodbye i see priests politicians the heroes in black plastic body bags under nation's flags what once again what superb imagery the idea of these the body bags of the soldiers under a country's flags i see children pleading with outstretched hands drenched in napalm this is no vietnam that's an important line, line too because of course napalm was used uh, in Vietnam, and you know this this picture that he's painting with ch children pleading with hands outstretched and crying, and then he says basically in a in a sort of little mini twist, this isn't Vietnam. No, no, this is in our civilized society. And then he says at the end, how can we justify they call us civilized? So he's he's really going back into you know his mind, 
his conscious, his body, and he's having these thoughts that are, of course, externalizing themselves as well. That's great. That's great. And I guess it's called blind curve because he couldn't see what was around the corner. He had to take that trip around the corner. I don't know. This is my head cannon. Let's move on into the next track, which is Childhood's End. We'll play the last few seconds here. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I love that chorus. I like this this climax of unification that's happening here. White Feather is an, a really nice conclusive piece. Like I said, I like this climactic unification, this call of unification from people from all different places, backgrounds, and this, you know, call for, you know, together we'll stand, you know, I, I like the line, hold on, let me, let me find it again here. I actually went off the lyrics for White Feather, um, where he says, divided we stand, together we'll rise. I think that's a really, really nice line. Like, you know, all these people coming from different places, in a sense, divided, I guess, you know, but they're coming together. I just really like that line. That's a good one. But childhood's end question mark Ooh. Mm. first of all story wise at least what i'm if i'm picking up what they're putting down i really like how everything comes together there the self-realization waking up from that trip looking in the mirror the change starts with you making that change uh we'll dive deeper into that everyone is having a fantastic time it is it is just like a jubilee it's joyous it's bright the music is is Oh, oh, even just even just like getting in here. There's such this this happy resolution to everything that's come before it that it just kind of settles your soul. It kind of puts you at peace. And I just really enjoy the way that the band comes together in doing all that. Uh, Trawavas on the bass. Mm, right? And Rothery, guitar, talked about him. Kelly, keys. Mm, like everyone's just just hitting it right. And I, I just really like the way that this this track I, I guess as a prelude to the ending, you could say, like, it, you know, of course, it's the, um, oh, how do you, what's the word? Second from last. <laughs> I, I just forgot the word. Um, but you know what I mean. Second last track, and I think it does a great job of resolving the cl the conflict from before, but still leaving you just a little bit of, of something for dessert, which is carried in the, in the final song there. But Fish sounds great. I like how they all harmonize. The music swallows you up with satisfaction. That is just a wonderful conclusion. I know that White Feather is technically the conclusion, but this is kind of the conclusion. Let's get into these lyrics, though. It was morning, and I found myself mourning for a childhood that I thought had disappeared. So, of course, this is after the trip, and he wakes up from all that and realizes some things. I'm not alone. I turned to the mirror. I saw you, the child that once loved. The change starts within himself. He realizes it after looking in the mirror. The child before they broke his heart. Our heart. The heart that I believed was lost. So there's a little bit of a disassociation going on within him as well. From perhaps past tragedies, right? As he's talking about these past tragedies and how they affected children specifically. Hey, you surprised, more than surprised, to find the answers to the questions were always in your own eyes. I like this conversation that's happening because he asks a question, hey, you, surprised, and then answered, more than surprised. But this, this conversation between A and B is really internally within him. That is good. That's good. Do you realize that you could have gone back to her, that, but that you would only be retracing all the problems that you ever knew? So untrue, for she's got to carry on with her life and you've got to carry on with yours. There is no childhood's end. You are my childhood friend. Leave me on. Hey you, you survived. Now you've arrived to be reborn in the shadow of the magpie. Now you realize that you've got to get out of here. You found the leading light of destiny burning in the ashes of your memory. Your future sometimes has to be uncovered from the ashes of your past. You want to change the world. You'd resign yourself to die a broken rebel, but that was looking backward. Now you've found the light. 
there is no childhood's end. I am your childhood friend. I, I just think that's really great. I, I really, really like the lyrics on here and the way that that's, that's, uh, that's revealed, basically, there. And then moving on to White Feather. When I hit the streets back in 81, found a heart in the gutter and a poet's crown. I felt barbed wire kisses and icicle tears. Where have I been for all these years? I saw political intrigue, political lies. Gonna wipe those smiles of self-satisfaction from their eyes. So I like the looking back into the past. Of course, this could be autobiographical from Fish, as some of the album has been thus far. Uh, and I like how he's he's having this realization. You can kind of feel the heart from him as well in here. We don't need no uniforms. We have no disguise. Divided we stand, together we'll rise. We'll, we will wear your white feather. All the children will carry your white fag. We will swear we have no nations, Beirut children, but we're proud of our own hearts, Jerusalem children. We'll wear your white feather, Tokyo children, Moscow children, Washington children, all the children. It doesn't matter. Divided, but united. I can't walk away. No more, no more. No more excuses, right? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe you guys feel different. <laughs> but I think that this, the concept especially, I mean, the music was great, but the concept especially was very well written, incredibly heartfelt, very personal. You can feel the personal, um, like, touch, I guess, behind it, of course, from very strong writing, and then a satisfying conclusion to everything as well. That was good. That was good. That was good. Let me know what you guys thought, though. Thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, sorry for the wait in getting to side two. But, you know, sometimes it happens. Uh, but <laughs> otherwise, I really do appreciate you guys being here. Of course, you're more than welcome to come back tomorrow. Patreon, Twitter, blah, 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 blah. I appreciate you. Thank you for spending some time with me. Hope you have an, a, an enjoyable rest of your day. And I will see you all later. Bye, guys.